Hi everyone and welcome back to another lab. In this lab, I will configure and verify switch port security. So as usual, I will start our demo with a brief introduction to what is port security and how it works. And then I will go over the lab tasks and then finally we'll walk you through the lab solution. So by the end of this lab, you will understand how to implement and verify switch port security on Cisco devices. So first things first, port security is a feature on Cisco switches that helps prevent unauthorized access to a network. And that happens by controlling which devices can connect to specific switch ports. It works by restricting the number of MAC addresses that can be learned on a port and taking action if an unauthorized device is detected. This helps protect against security threats such as MAC address spoofing and unauthorized device connections and network flooding attacks. When port security is enabled on a switch port, the switch learns and stores the MAC addresses of the connected devices. Depending on on how it's configured, this can be done dynamically or statically. There is also a sticky MAC option which dynamically learns MAC addresses but saves them into the running configurations. So if an unauthorized device attempts to connect to a secured port, the switch enforces a violation mode which determines what happens next. There are three violation modes. They are protect and restrict and shut down. The protect mode it drops packets from unauthorized MAC addresses without generating any alerts. The restrict mode, it drops packets and logs the violation but keeps the port active. And the shutdown mode puts the port into an error disabled state, effectively disabling it until an administrator manually re-enables it again. By implementing port security, network administrators can ensure that only trusted devices are allowed on specific switch ports, which can reduce the risk of unauthorized access and improve the overall network security. Okay, so with regards to the lab topology. As you can see on the screen, we have a small LAN topology that consists of a single router that is connected to a single switch and switch one is connected to a couple of end hosts. These are the management PC and the server. And also you can see that we have a couple of unauthorized laptops. These are not connected to any device as we speak. However, they will be used to mimic the unauthorized devices in the network. And the aim of our lab is to prevent any unauthorized devices from being connected to the network. Okay, so in terms of the lab tasks, we will start by testing connectivity between the management PC and the server to the gateway. Then we will unplug the ethernet cable attached to the management PC and we're gonna move it to the unauthorized laptops and check if we can reach the gateway or router one. Once we have finished with this testing, we will then restore the cable and recover our lab topology. Next, we will work out the MAC address for the management PC and the server. And we will do that from switch one's perspective. Then we will configure port security on switch one on both interfaces that are connected to our end devices. We will then configure different port security using the static option for the interface connected to the server. And we will use the sticky or dynamic option for the interface that is connected to the management PC. We will also use different violation settings such as shutdown and restrict. And we will also explain the difference between each mode. Once we get to that stage, we will then repeat the first stage step and then tackle the last step where we are going to recover the port and make sure that the links are operational once more and this will be the end of the lab. Before we proceed to the lab solution, if you would like to test your knowledge on this topic, you will find a post linked in the video description below. The post includes lab information and a couple of packet tracer labs, which are provided in a Microsoft document. You can download the document to access both the pre and the post lab versions. Okay, so I'm going to tackle the first task where we need to verify connectivity between the management and server end devices to the gateway. So I will go to the management PC first, and then I will initiate a ping request to the default gateway. As you can see, we are able to ping the gateway with no issues. I'll do the same thing on the server. And we also have connectivity with no issues seen on the network. What I'll do next, I will try to unplug the cable that is connected to the management PC and the server, plug them into the unauthorized laptop one and laptop two. And at the moment, you can see the link is going through the spanning tree uh, protocol calculation. And because of that, I am going to expedite the process by clicking the button fast forward time. And you can see now they are green. 
So I will go to the unauthorized laptop one. I'll go to the desktop and from there I should be able to ping the gateway with no issues. Again, we are able to reach the gateway. And the same applies for the unauthorized laptop too. So I'm going to recover the lab topology and I will unplug the cables from the unauthorized laptops back to the end device. I will also fast forward the time. And what I will do next, I will go to step number two, where we need to determine the MAC address for each of the end devices. And in order for us to do this, we will need to issue a command called show MAC space address dash table. And at the moment, you can see that the table is empty. And this is why we would need to regenerate some traffic from the end devices to the gateway. And now I will reissue the same command. And this time you will be able to see that the MAC address table have been populated with the appropriate MAC address that is attached from each interface. So for example, fast ethernet 01, I know is connected to the management PC and therefore the management MAC address ends with E428 and the server's MAC address ends with 4184 since fast ethernet 02 is connected to the server. So now that we have covered step number one and step number two, let's move into step number three where we need to configure port security for the management PC. We will be using port security MAC address sticky option and we will also set the violation to restrict. So in order for us to do that, we would need to go to global config and then we would need to set the interface to fast ethernet 0 slash 1 and we will need to set the switch port mode into access and then we will issue the switch port port dash security to enable port security for under this interface and then after that we will say switch port port security and I'm gonna set the mac dash address and if we were to question mark this you will see the content sensitive held so we've got two options we either configure the mac address statically or we could learn the mac address dynamically so if we want to learn the mac address from the end device dynamically we would need to use the sticky option so i'm going to say sticky and then after that we would need to set the violation to restrict so i will say switch port port dash security violation restrict and before we actually apply the command let's just go one step back and let's issue the content sensitive health and in there you will be able to find three different modes so the switch port security violation command in Cisco IOS defines how switch responds when a security violation occurs on a on a port due to an unauthorized MAC address. So for example, the protect mode, it drops packets from unauthorized MAC addresses without logging the violation. The port remains operational, but signally discards traffic from an unauthorized MAC address. So you would apply this setting when you want to allow only known MAC addresses without disrupting the port, but you don't need any notifications or logs. The second mode is restrict. And again, it drops packets from an unauthorized MAC addresses, but this time it logs the violation. The same as the protect mode, it will keep the port operational, but packets will be discarded. You will use this option or this setting when you need to enforce port security and be notified of any violations. And finally, the shutdown mode where it disables the port and changes the state of the port into error disabled. And that happens when an unauthorized MAC address is detected. In this case, the port shutdowns completely and must be manually re-enabled. You would need to use this when security is critical and any violation should completely disable access and a syslog message will be generated to notify the network administrator. So I will set the violation mode into restrict. And then after that, I'm going to do some in-flight checks. So I will say show run pipe section ethernet zero slash one, and I will include the dollar sign. 
and right now you would be able to see the current configurations on the fast ethernet 01 where i'm highlighting on the screen now we will need to generate some traffic from the management pc to the gateway so that the port security will be able to detect the mac address and learn it and then it will store the current mac address into the running configurations so i will go back to the management pc and then i will reinitiate the same command you can see the ping is still successful and now if i go back to the switch cli and let's reinitiate the same command again you will be able to see that the mac address have been learned dynamically and stored into the running config so this is step number three that is done let's move into step number four where we need to do the same thing but for the interface that is connected to the server so again i will go back to the global config and then from there i should be able to go to the interface fast ethernet 0 slash 2 interface configuration level and again i will repeat the same commands where i need to set the switch port mode to access and then after that we would need to enable switch port port security and then this time we will need to configure the mac address statically so i'm gonna say mac dash address and i will go up to get the mac address that is associated with the server and i'm going to paste it there and then after that we would need to set the violation and just to let you know that the port security uses the shutdown violation by default but for the sake of demonstrating this i will configure it so i'm going to say switch port port security violation shutdown i'm going to hit end and then after that, let's do some in-flight checks. So I'm going to say show run pipe section ethernet 0 slash 2. And here you'll be able to see that we have configured the MAC address statically. Next, let's move into step number five, where we need to verify connectivity. We would need to repeat step number one and go through the same steps. So I will go back to the management PC and let's just ping the default gateway once more we have connectivity and no issues let's do the same thing on the server and again there is connectivity with no issues so what i will do next i will go to my lab topology i will unplug the cables from the end devices and i will try to plug them into unauthorized laptop one and unauthorized laptop two You can see that port security is actually doing its job and the unauthorized laptop one is no longer able to communicate with the default gateway now let's do the same thing on the unauthorized laptop two and observe what is going to happen to the lab topology so at the moment when i initiate the ping request from the unauthorized laptop two to the gateway the interface will actually go down instantly so as soon as interface fast ethernet 02 detects any traffic from an unauthorized mac address it will set the interface into error disabled and it will shut it down and as you can see that we have lost connectivity to the gateway and if i were to go to the switch one cli and issue show ip interface brief you will be able to see that the interface to fast ethernet 02 is in the down down state if we were to look at the interface the statistics so we can say show interface to fast ethernet 0 slash 2 you will be able to see that the interface status is currently down down and the current interface state is in the error disabled state okay so with that being done let's then recover the lab topology where we unplugged the cables from the unauthorized laptops laptop one and laptop two and plug them back into the appropriate end device 
Next, let's move into step number six, where we need to re-enable the FOSS Ethernet 02 since it's been moved into error disabled mode. So in order for us to do that, we would need to go back to global config, go to interface FOSS Ethernet 0 slash 2, and we would need to issue the command shutdown, and then we would need to issue the no shutdown. And that would bring the interface back to the up up state. So I will hit end and then I'll say show interface fast ethernet zero slash two. And this time you will be able to see that it's in the up up state. Next, let's do some final verification so that we are able to reach the gateway from the server and the management PC. So I will go to the management PC. I will execute the same command and you can see that we were able to reach the gateway with no issues from the management PC. And now let's check communication from the server point of view. So I will use the same command as well, ping 10.10.10.1. And this time we have reachability and connectivity. So that's it folks for this video. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn notification so you never miss our future tutorials and tech insights. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to drop a comment below. I read all your comments and I'm here to assist you. Remember, consistency and hands-on practice are key to success. So stay curious, stay inspired, and until next time, peace.